Well, let's now switch gears and focus on innovation. Uh, one of the big uh, focus points that we want to talk about today, and we've got a group here who've got some rather interesting uh, products or uh, uh, technology that they've come up with, and uh, they want to tell us a bit about it. Let me briefly introduce everyone here before me. We have next to me Robert Mutinda, who's an innovation officer with the ICT Authority. Next to him is Simon Mwaura, an innovator, and this setup is uh, belongs to Simon Mwaura. He'll, he'll show us what this is all about in just a bit. Those two gentlemen there, one is Robert Gatoho, he's the CEO of Nyeri Talents Academy, and next to him that young man is Samuel Munene, an aspiring robotics engineer. We'll start from my far uh, left there, and let me start with you, Buana Samuel Munene. I see you have some robots there with us. Briefly tell us a little bit about them and what they do or can't do. Uh, here with me I have robot uh, peg, robot peg, that is used to carry pegs. Robot peg. Yeah, that oh, I use. Okay. Uh, I designed or I built for my mother so that when maybe she, she's just washing clothes, she can carry pegs for her. Okay. And also here I have robot Zero Max. That's the white one that's now on the screen. Zero, zero Max. Zero Max. Zero Max. Yes. What does that mean? It's a name. It's my name of the, the name of the company. And then Max is a name that I got from a some materials that I was reading and I got inspired by the materials. Okay. That's why I used Max also. Okay. So these robots, uh, the reason that I made this robot, uh, it can be used by those people that are running languages, like those that are doing IELTS, and they can use it to run when preparing for the exams. It also got some stories, so when maybe you have maybe purchased it and it's, it is in your home press, uh, your kids can listen to stories that are addressed and they can learn a lot from the, those stories. Because you put a voice system in it. Yeah. Okay, briefly demonstrate. Let's start with the one, the peg one. Yes. Show us now something, I mean, so how it's motion. Uh, I, I think I should start with this So you want to start with this one? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, so he's doing some, uh, some setup there. All right. Zira, Zira Max yes. is what he called it, okay. There's uh, quite some anticipation here in studio as we wait to see what will happen. I see there's some solar panels uh, there on the robot as well. All right. It also has some Bluetooth. Okay. Okay, let's see. All right, so while, while he's setting that up and you'll demonstrate for us shortly, let me come to Bona, uh, Simon Kimani here who also has a different innovation. I can give you a minute briefly to explain the setup that you have here. Okay. Um, um, what I can uh, explain is uh, more about my innovation that is ahead of here. Um, I have been in the media for quite some time and um, I have done a lot of innovations, but uh, I came to thought that I can make something that can commercially be viable. And okay. People can uh, be able to adopt it and uh, purchase so that I can earn from it. And these are some of the standard market stuff that I thought that I can uh, be able to, uh, to, to, to make. And um, at the end of the making, that I can make a, a product by purchasing the outer casing because we have a challenge in terms of uh, outer casing. Okay. And now my circuit board can be inside, then I can program it to do whatever. So this is what, a little computer? This is our security system. Security system? That you can be able to put it in your house and uh, implement a lot of sensors in doors and uh, windows and uh, actually operating some of the appliances in the house, okay. like writings, uh, your TV, your fridge, and all that. And remotely, you can do it from your phone. It has an app. It has an RF uh, frequency, radio frequency control. When you're in the house, you don't have to use the phone. You need just to use your remote to switch on your right and switch off the right. One of the advantages that I've made this is uh, I have uh, cataloged out of the uh, Rocco features that most people requires, unlike the one that are in the market, okay. and be able to customize it in a way that uh, people can be able to get several uh, alerts uh, within their phones wherever they are away from their home. So it's a, it can be a security system. Yes. Uh, you can uh, program it to light up at night, for example, if you don't want uh, people uh, to know you're not home. Exactly. Can you demonstrate for yeah. us? Um, for easy access, right now I can use um, my RF sensor to switch on the right. Okay. By pressing this, I can uh, switch on the right as well as get notification on my phone. So once I have done that, if somebody so you've just pressed press the button, button and then and I get a notification on my phone, what I have done already to my system. Okay, let's see what that, uh, um, and I don't know if, and, um, if uh, I can uh, 
So, so it's an, an app that it's is an app. connected to this setup. Uh, exactly. And you're saying that people can set this up at home and... Exactly. And you can be able to see whatever you have done within okay. the system. Let me just widen up the SMS. Okay. Let me see. So I can read the text here. Security, I don't know whether he'll be able to zoom in on that. Security switched on, powered by this uh, technology. Yeah. And I want to confirm the timestamp, 11.28. Exactly. Okay. So uh, as soon as you press that on, and you can do it from, you said you can use your phone, meaning I can be This is a global access. As long as the SMS can be able to go through wherever the country you are, you can be able to do the same. So even if you're in the country, you can be able to know whether the intrusion in your house and yes. it, 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 it define the specific entry because you have to edit the text depending on the entry that you require from the system. Okay, yes. okay. Oh, f okay, fantastic. And you can also sort of open doors as well exactly. with Exactly, you function. can open the doors. And these are s system that people right now, they are consuming. Because what I normally does, I go to a client, I reason whatever that he want, yes. and he can speak, and then I can make the model of the interest of the features as it requires. Then I bring it to use it in accordance to his specific Okay, 10 years ago, um, we did a story on you yep. uh, on an, another show, yep. and you had set up your house with a security system, yes, and you exactly. even had a team maker mm -hmm. as well. Just tell us briefly about that before I bring in Bona Robert. Yeah, that one uh, actually helped me. Um, actually, the, the studio helped me to lift me up from the technology which I was having because by then, I didn't know anything to do with computing. Okay. So once I was given a chance to be at the University of Nairobi in ta at uh, uh, Gearbox, uh, I, I, I pick it up and uh, pick it up from there and I'm able now to use everything to do with the computer. That's why you can see the symbol that you saw that those years, the big it was, right now is so it's small much smaller. and it's more smarter than the way it used to Good. be. Good. I've had some sound from the robot. Yep. Is yes. that a sign that it's now ready to, yeah. uh, you're ready to do a, a small demonstration for us? Okay, quite some wires there that he's, he's, he's connecting. It's always that, that awkward part of a demonstration when... Uh so have you programmed any languages on it or...? No, not at all. Okay. Yes. I dare say that might be rather scary at night. <laughs> if this robot was, was walking around your, your house. <laughs> so you have a remote control that you're using now to power its, its movements? Yes. Okay. Oh wow, even the head, even the... <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, quite interesting, I must say. Oh, okay. Can you program one of these one day to read the news? <laughs> because uh, that will mean a lot of us will lose our jobs. And, and what I find fascinating about you, sir Samuel, is that you were courageous enough to tell our correspondent in, in Nyeri that you got a D yes. in your KCSE. Yes. Let me give you 30 seconds to talk a bit about that and how it has powered you to get into this. Something many people think you'd have to go to school to learn how yes. to do. Yeah, tell us. What, um. what gave you the courage to carry on, you know, despite what some would say is a result that could demotivate you? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Yes. Uh, and despite of the poor grade that I got in high school, uh, I still had... Sorry, just put him... Uh, he's, he, he's interrupting your discussion. Just can you put him off a little bit? Yeah. Just Sorry, you're saying despite the poor grade that you got in school? Yeah, I still, as a young person, I still had the interest in uh, technology. I used to build small things when I was just a small boy, like repair phones, repair so many things in the society, even ladies. And uh, I reached a point where uh, in high school, and I thought uh, there was these uh, incidents when uh, our soldiers were killed in Somalia. So I decided, why don't I come up with a robot that looked like a soldier? And that's when I, build, I did build my uh, first robot that looked like a soldier. Uh, which I went to present to different kind of schools and the, so that to encourage our government in technology so that we can be building robots and be used to in those kind of wars in, instead of sending our soldiers and then they are getting killed and living as in their families mm -hmm. in a lot of struggle. So I have from there when I, I first 
uh, did that robot and, and made it, and I saw it was awesome. I decided uh, mostly to specialize on robots, okay, and also not only robots, also drones, CCTVs that are. Oh, you actually have a little drone here. Yeah, a mini drone. A oh, mini drone. Okay, sorry, yeah. I hadn't even actually seen it. <laughs> yes, let, let me bring in Robert Mutinda, who's an innovation officer with ICT Authority. First of all, let me get your thoughts on, on a little bit about what you've seen here today. We had a lot of other innovators who we were hoping to, you know, join us, but they could not do so today. So this is just a little bit of what's happening in Kenya at the moment. You talk to us. Yeah, I think this is very, very, very amazing. Um, looking at what he's done and what he's doing, I'm actually impressed in our ability to build uh, the, 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 the motherboard uh, locally because that has always been a challenge in hardware innovation. And uh, we have so many young guys who are trying to do this. Personally, having been an innovator before, uh, before joining ICT Authority and having uh, benefited from what ICT Authority is doing for such kind of innovations because these are African solutions for Africans and this is what is going to work. Many of times we have tried to import a lot of solutions mm -hmm. from outside there and they are not uh, tailor-made for us. So I think this is uh, impressive and like you said we have so many out there that we are trying to see at different stages on how we can support them and how we can be able to take them to commercialization. Briefly so tell us what these two groups of uh, innovators can do to take these products to the next level. <coughs> I, what I options do they have in this country? Um, I think first, uh, every innovation and every startup has uh, different needs at different levels. Mm -hmm. Like we always say, uh, an innovation at ideation and another one at commercialization mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. different needs. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we have, we have a framework that we look at what level you are and how you can do it. But somebody at some level needs seed capitation, and some other one needs mentorship, another one needs linkages, another one needs exposure. So when, when we actually um, evaluate at what level they have, we are able to know exactly how can we help them. Okay. Because, yeah. Okay, and finally, what are you doing as an authority to take innovation forward? It's been said that Kenya is the most innovative country in East Africa, one of the leading, in most, one of the leading innovators in terms of as a country in Africa as well. But government support is not where it should be. What are you doing to ensure that uh, people like these ones here have a chance to get their products to the very top? Ah, okay, very good. Uh, like I said, uh, at, the, at the innovation department, we've come up, we've tried to come up with uh, a, a framework on su supporting these people. So right now we have what we are calling an innovation community uh, that ICT Authority is supporting, just trying to engage the innovators at different sectors. Because we have innovators in hardware, we also have innovators in software, mm -hmm. fintech and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are trying to understand what are the needs and providing the necessary support. Support here being uh, creating the environment, okay. the right environment, uh, the linkages that I talked about, uh, the exposures because we have exposed and this time, ev all the time we are getting exposed. We are also trying to get a uh, connection to uh, uh, investment both local investment and foreign direct investment. Okay. And most important is we also trying to work with hubs to in, in, in getting access to necessary facilities like internet connectivity, okay. electricity, and, and, and those things. Okay. But most important is mentorship. Mentorship, mentorship is what you feel yes. is needed at the moment. I want to give our three innovators here, or at least our two innovators, plus, of course, Bona Robert Gato, uh, 30 seconds each to just tell us what they dream of when they think of taking their products to the next level. What would you hope to achieve five, ten years from now in terms of some of the innovations you have here. Let me start with you. Okay, me, what I uh, could dream of for the next, like, ten years to come is where that I can see, as uh, uh, our, our next uh, as have spoken said, is to see a center whereby such thing has been uh, to be done by young people and uh, being given a capacity as the government can be able to initiate a lot of uh, initiation for us. The way we, uh, the progress that I have gotten for the last ten years where I am today, if there was something that was ignited, maybe I could Those be accelerated. Exactly. Uh -huh. I could be accelerated to be somewhere higher than that. But it has come to a point of uh, struggling to be able now to deliver and to execute exactly what I'm having in my mind. So I wish if I can uh, be able to be in a position by the 10 years I see young people, when we see such kind of talent coming up, I'm able to tap them. Uh, initiate them to the center and be able to capitalize and bring them to the to, to shoot up with a higher speed more than they can struggle on their own. Fair enough. Robert yeah. Gatoho, you've also really tried to take this young man under your wing. Tell us briefly what sort of support you have helped him with and where you see him going in the next five, ten years as well. 
thank you Waiga uh, like you said I am Robert Gatoho from Nyeri uh, Talents Academy uh, what I envisage uh, with these young people that you have right now uh, they have so many potential you can see I'm um, here basically today because of Samuel Monene he's doing amazingly um, great things uh, with innovations and all that at C uh, Talents Academy what we do we try to get them from the mach machinani level you know and bring them up expose them because what they lack is mostly exposure and empowerment like he is talking about empowerment what I uh, would like to, to have maybe in five years time is to have hubs in every mm -hmm. every county or every constituency level for example hubs for innovation for talent development and empowerment those kind of things and it is possible and mostly I uh, would like to encourage the parents uh, you know and every mm -hmm. young person is out there you don't have to be academically gifted for you to make it in life Monena here for example got a, a deep lane in, in, in KCC but he's doing amazing and great things. He's doing more than some who got more than that. That is true. As you as you put the robot back on, Munene, I can also give you a chance to talk about your dream for the future briefly. Uh, my first wish is to do engineering and robotics, and then after there, establish my own company in robotics, where I'll be able to take those people also like I who have the, those kind of talents and help them to be to achieve also their dreams so and by that I, I will have also created job opportunities in Kenya and most of the materials that we do import uh, will be now being being made in Kenya which will be uh, which will save a lot of uh, our m our c capital as Kenya okay okay yeah. fair enough as um, uh, the drone is it working yeah a uh, bit of a little connection a bit of connection yeah okay so i don't know but, uh, how much time do you think that will take to set up uh only like two minutes or two minutes yeah okay maybe we'll do that at the very tail end but once again let's see a demonstration of what you can do with the robot i think it uh, i don't know if we got enough of that So you put what a spring on the is that uh, how do you make the head move in that way again my little physics knowledge has fizzled out mm -hmm. um i will uh put some springs it has some springs okay and you can show us as, as you put it on uh -huh. yeah. it has some springs and motors that which have some gears that they are enabling the head to move up and down and okay. also to rotate sense and, and, also where, and where did you learn all this? Did you get a book to read? Did you go on YouTube? Not at all. It's just that something that uh, just creeps in my mind and then I start... <laughs> <laughs> Why don't such things creep into my mind? I, I, I only wonder. <laughs> and then you, you can also even listen to music. So you've programmed like music and... Yeah, you can use your phone to listen to music. Uh, for example, let me just use... The, <laughs> yeah. So the robot can be a DJ also. <laughs> yes, <laughs> entertainer. <laughs> 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 okay, very interesting. So, <laughs> 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 my goodness. Well, I'm hoping our viewers at home can hear some of the music. You can even dance. Dance. No, the robot. <laughs> So the main charge is the batteries, but okay. um, they don't last very long. Yeah, because I use the phone batteries, which they are only 3.7 volts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a little bit. So we'll leave him to set up the drone. Hopefully, we'll get some chance uh, at the end. You know, if we have time to show that to you as well. Yes. But nevertheless, just a snapshot of what's happening in Kenya on the technology scene and what the authority is doing as well. We certainly hope for more part partnerships and linkages on the same. But I must say, I am impressed by what uh, we have seen here from uh, Samuel Munene and also Simon Mwaura. If you, if, if you ever get a chance to uh, see what he set up in his house, it's something that's quite unbelievable. By the time he was getting home, a cup of tea had already been prepared. The doors were open, the curtains were drawn, the lights were on, and these are all local, homemade homegrown solutions. 2242 is our SMS line. If you have any thoughts about innovation in this country, talk to us and of course on social media as well. What do you think about a bit of what we've shown you today in studio? I uh, use the hashtag citizen extra.